Welcome to Christline. My name is Tyler, and today we're going to be reading Day 7 in the devotional book titled 31 Days of Worship. Here's the verse of the day. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him, and so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it, and the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. Judges chapter 6 verses 27 and 28. More than likely, Gideon was the one, was the only one in his family who served God. His father and the rest of his family worshipped Baal. And this worship consisted of the most vulgar, lewd, and sexually explicit actions that one could imagine. Gideon's family were the descendants of the tribe of Manasseh, one of the twelve tribes of Israel, yet they had reduced themselves to worshiping the man-made god of Baal. How could this be? God had made a covenant with the people of Israel, but when they rejected it, the result was spiritual declension of its tribes. But Gideon chose to serve the Lord, and the Lord instructed Gideon to tear down the altar of Baal, an altar that helped to turn people against God. In its place, Gideon was to build an altar to the Lord, the one true God. This took some guts. Given the same situation today, most in the modern church would advise Gideon to leave the altar of Baal alone. To leave the altar of Baal alone. We strongly urge you not to tear this altar down, they would say. The altar of your God can coexist with the altar of Baal. This is the same thing today's church says to the newly saved person who continues in a lifestyle that is not pleasing to the Lord. Some will even tell such an individual that he could remain in that lifestyle and that it could be his ministry in the belief that he could reach others for Christ. That's like telling an alcoholic that since he's now saved, he can keep right on going to bars and drinking all he wants to drink while at the same time witnessing to those in that environment. You can see how foolish that belief is. Yet, it's prevalent in churches across the country. When Jesus saved us, he saved us out of sin, not in sin. Jesus did not pay a great price for us to continue engaging in the lifestyle we lived prior to salvation. He died for us to remove us from those lifestyles, to bring us out and place us into a new belief system. He died so that we could be victorious over the world, the flesh, and the devil, and to stand above the giants in our lives, free from the powers of sin. He paid a great price to redeem us, and he does not want us to go back into that old way of living. And I have some notes written right here. Once we become saved, we are not to return to the same lifestyle. It is to be forfeited for a new life in Christ. Forsake the ways of the world and live like Jesus. Never go back to your old life, for there is a great change that has taken place. It's just like that scripture that says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That was the entire point of salvation. Jesus saved us from sin. He saved us from ourselves, which is why Paul in the New Testament says, Know ye not that you are not your own? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, as mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we are to live separated from the world. Jesus said, Therefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And this is a part of our everyday sanctification process, where as long as we keep our faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us at the cross, the Holy Spirit will have that latitude because you're giving him that latitude to daily develop you, 
to rid out the bad that's in you on a daily basis and conform you into the image of Christ. Just as John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. Seek the Lord and we are not to have fellowship with the world because the Bible says, for what fellowship hath light with darkness and what righteousness with unrighteousness and what concord does Christ have with Belial? And that's another term for Satan. Come out from among them and be separate. He says, abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. You're, not, you're no longer the same person. There is a brand new, a change that has taken place inside of you. Everyone who is in Christ has been made a new creation. So I pray this was a blessing and encouragement for you. I pray you got something out of it. And God bless you today.